Welcome back to our Japan vlogs and in this video we're going to be showing you guys around the island of Hokkaido. This is also day one of our five day trip. If you ever go to Japan you must visit Hokkaido because we expected it to be more of a winter destination for skiing and seeing all the snow but it is actually extremely underrated and incredibly beautiful in the spring and summer months as well. That's why in this video we hope to give you guys a better example of why you should come to Hokkaido and all the things you can see that many people probably don't know about. Trying to fit all of our luggage here because we just got a rental car. We just landed in, Ho in Hokkaido. We're gonna go check out Sapporo and we're gonna drive around since we can now drive around instead of taking the trains everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, this is gonna be interesting. A little bit like Iceland, but <laughs> we're gonna see how this turns out. If you watched our previous vlogs from Japan, we used the JR Pass and bullet trains most of the time, so this is the first time we are driving in Japan with a car. As you can see, after only driving for a couple of minutes, we noticed some trees blooming, so we had to stop. It turns out these are actually cherry blossoms, which we were not expecting to see at all because we didn't see any on the mainland in Japan, but they were still blooming up in Hokkaido. This was the route that we had planned for the day, and as you can see, our first stop is Nobori Betsu. Guys, we finally landed in Hokkaido. We landed in Sapporo just a little bit ago, uh, and since then we went straight to the rental car company and drove straight here to Nobori Betsu. We are at Jigokudani, which is Hell Valley, which as you can see right here, uh, I believe that's what this says on this post. And it's this giant uh, thermal vent area. It smells like really bad. Uh, it's very similar to what we encountered when we went to Iceland. Uh, the exact same smell, so if you're interested in another place that has thermal vents like that, you can go check out our Iceland video. But yeah, this is uh, Jigokudani or uh, Hell Valley in Noboribetsu, Japan in Hokkaido. It's only like an hour and 40 minutes if you don't take the highway, maybe an hour from Sapporo. So it's a really good, easy, easy thing to come see. Start running! So we keep walking further, we're on our way to a foot bath right now because we want to go try that out but there's a lot of different paths and routes you can take 
you can take your time, you can be fast, however much you want to see it all depends. There's a lot of maps that show you the different routes and where you are. Like there's one that's right down below us and then there's another one that leads you into the into Hell's Valley more or less, like right in the center of it. So look at the maps and decide which path you want to take for yourself. Jigoku Dani is a 24 acre smoking crater of geothermal activity. The way this crater was actually created was by a volcanic eruption 20,000 years ago. So we finally made it to the base of Hell's Valley and sadly I cannot fly the drone here because it, it is against the national park rules and regulations and it'd be sick to get some drone footage here but rather you know just respect the policy but like the amount of geothermal vents all around here is really cool but man it smells terrible and the breeze is pretty the wind is pretty high today so it's blowing all of the smells straight to you and <laughs> allegedly from our information is that the blue water is around 50 degrees celsius while the black water you guys see over there should be around 130 degrees celsius so if you stick your finger in there it's gonna come out all red and cooked and you might as well eat it but you know if you guys can't tell by the sign danger keep out this water is hot jigokudani hell valley and jigokudani in Honshu, the home of the snow monkeys, famous for their hot tubbing in the onsens, are actually two different places, so if you look up just Jigokudani, you will get multiple results. After around half an hour of hiking, we were finally approaching the footpath, which is a great place to sit, take a break, and relax. Hell's Valley in Noboribetsu gets its name from emitting hot sulfurous steam all year round. In the past, the Japanese believed this was a gateway to Buddhist hell and demons would even spawn from beneath the ground. This is why there's a lot of demon mascots and sculptures around Jigokudani. After finishing up at Noboribetsu, we are now heading towards our second destination, Lake Toya.
As we were approaching Lake Toya, we saw a bunch of cherry blossom trees. And as we got closer to Lake Toya, we saw even more. There were so many that we actually had to stop in Sobetsu, which is right next to Lake Toya, and take a couple of videos of these cherry blossom trees. At the time when we stopped at Sobetsu Park, we actually had no idea that it's actually pretty well known for its cherry blossom trees. If you would like to come to Japan to look at its nature, I highly recommend coming to Hokkaido. It's also extremely nice because unlike Tokyo and Kyoto, there aren't very many people here and especially not a lot of tourists. So it's a great underrated place to go if you are really interested in Japan's natural beauty. One of the things that we were most surprised by in Hokkaido was the amount of flowers and how beautiful the flowers looked. There are multiple flower farms that we visited in Hokkaido and even the wildflowers as we drove by looked absolutely beautiful and that is why we had to take so many amazing videos of them. One of the best things we saw here in Sobetsu was when the wind started blowing and all the cherry blossom petals started flying around and slowly falling to the ground. Lake Toya is a volcanic caldera lake in Shikotsu Toya National Park. One of the reasons that many tourists come to see Lake Toya is because of the beautiful mountain in the middle of the lake. Hokkaido is well known for its dairy products, and as we were driving, we came across Lake Hill Farm, which is a place that sells really great dairy-based products. After enjoying some refreshments, we took a walk around the farm and enjoyed the beautiful scenery and views that it had to offer. The farm itself is actually pretty small. It looks more like a cottage. However, it is surrounded by beautiful flower beds on all sides. We didn't notice it at first because we were too amazed by all the flowers and grass fields that you can actually see Mount Yote off in the distance. After getting a little sidetracked with our adventure, we finally made it to the top viewing point at Lake Toya. 
This is exactly the type of view that we would like to get on the drone for you guys, but unfortunately the wind was blowing really hard so it was almost impossible to get the drone up there to do that. So instead, we just took a couple of videos. Hope you guys enjoy them. After leaving Lake Toya, we realized it was actually pretty late already and decided to set a course for our hotel for the night. This means that we were unable to make it to Sapporo as we had originally planned because we just didn't have enough time to go see it. The Josanke Taruga Resort was the most modern and elegant hotel we stayed at during our entire trip in Japan. It was also the most expensive hotel with one night costing 517 US dollars for the four of us. Dinner and breakfast were also included in this cost. One of its most attractive features is mostly apparent in the winter because of its close proximity to ski resorts in the area. Josanke uh, Resort and Spa. It is a very nice hotel. I don't know, you guys have definitely seen the footage from when we first came here. It's a very nice driveway leading up, lots of parking space, and the lobby is absolutely beautiful with this. It's complete with this really nice dripping waterfall, and the staff here are really nice. They were kind enough to take our bags when we first parked at the door, take our bags all the way up to our room, and give us like a whole tour of the lobby, where the onsen is, where the restaurant is, and even like uh, tell us everything about uh, our own hotel room and they showed us around in here. So it was really nice. Uh, staff are very nice, uh, location's great. I really like it, there's parking space. And the number one thing that I think is also really cool is gonna be the onsen later. Uh, but a quick, a quick fact that we do have to note is that when you get here, when you arrive on the floor that you'll be staying at, you're gonna take off your shoes and put them in a shoe, little shoe locker uh, because everyone, from that point forward, once you find that shoe locker, walks around in the slippers. And basically, when you walk around on the floor here, uh, like even in the hallway leading up to the elevator, you'll, you'll see in the video, but you, you walk around in socks. You don't walk around with shoes or anything. Uh, you only wear the slippers when you go back down after putting away your shoes to go to the dinner and the onsen and all that. So it's very interesting and it's very cool. As you can see, it comes with two beds. They're two single person beds. So we're gonna see if we if we can fit onto these beds. If not, we do have enough room on this couch, I believe. Uh, it comes with a traditional tatami floor, quick three by three, uh, TV, massage chair, right behind us the bathroom. It's very nice, very nice room, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, yeah, it's very well put together and it's, it's very spacious.
guess we're wondering if the buffet was good. It is. So while we're at dinner, they're nice enough to set up the futon for me and Dylan because I'm not gonna lie, the two twins over there is definitely not enough room. So we came back and the futons were already laid out, so that's awesome. We didn't even ask. Yeah, we didn't even have to ask, so that's pretty sweet. And yeah, we're gonna go to the onsen now, relax, and then tomorrow morning, I wanna go to the onsen before breakfast again because it's supposed to be very nice during the daytime. And uh, yeah, I, I'm so full, the food was really good, and I can't wait to go relax and go to bed. I'm done, I'm tired. We're up, we're up since 4.30 this morning. All right, so we changed into our onsen apparel, our pajamas that we have over here. We even have the beautiful socks. All I need is the wooden, the wooden flip flops to go with it. But I don't. I'm buying those before I leave Japan. But yeah, we're ready to go hit the onsen. And what are your thoughts on this whole outfit? I think it's a very nice silk vest that they give you to wear. It's it's very comfortable. I like it a lot. It's very stylish. And yes. everyone, everyone's on the same page because everyone else is wearing it too. So you look really cool. Yep. All right. Now we're gonna go hit the onsen. The resort has an amazing onsen and incredible nightly entertainment which creates a great classy atmosphere. <laughs> 